After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave them many convincing proofs that he is alive. As it was in the latter days, so it is in the present. Coming up next, healing. Man of God, help my son. He's got left testicular torsion. His uh, testicles are in and swollen. They wanted to remove them on Monday within six hours. Then I said, wait, let me go and see the prophet. So they're waiting for me. Right now he can't sit. This thing happened on Tuesday. They say that when they remove the testicle, he won't give birth. And they say that when the other testicle has done this, the right one will also do the, the same thing, which means no children for him. I'm here believing it's just because he was supposed to be done operation on this. Is this the problem? Yes, sir. It's swollen. That's why he can sit down. The testicles has swelled. The testicle has turned. Now there's no blood flow to the testicles. Now that's how it's dying. And now whatever happened to the left one will soon happen to, to the right one. This is a pain of faith from a mother who's concerned about his son. <laughs> the son has this is the father of the son. See the reaction of the father. <coughs> See how she's, he's shaking. <laughs> The people from the village. The people from his village. Did he tell you? What was happening in the past in their in their in their family? No, he once told him that his mother almost died just before he was born. Sacrificial. They used to live a life of sacrifice, sacrificing goat, sacrificing the lamb. Even the grandmother, he whenever the uh, ceremonies, he did the kalanga. <laughs> Son up, let him tell you what they told him. They told him this thing, you people, this new religion, faith you people are trying to follow, it will take you nowhere. You will still come back. Yes, it's it's never obele about two million you know what I'm saying. I'm going to Lisa Hope, Lee Tala me tell you, baby. But let a boy live. It's been a challenge uh, being being a Christian right from my my young age. Uh, you know, I was laughed at. Uh, once became a Christian, they told me, "What are you doing? What is uh, going on?" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. Every time you try to sit down, what's happening? All of it. It's always hurting? Yes. Okay. Because of where your father is coming from, okay? Yes. It's not your problem. So for how long now? Every day. Every day? Oh, my God. What is your name? Sitile. 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 Yes. The first one is Senel, second born Sarona, the third born is Siti, it's a sentence. Okay, how are you? Fine. Okay, your name is John, okay? <laughs> according, according to God, your other name is John. Sador, come on. You can see the man of God taking of God. his Since time. There's been battles after battles. Write the name John, it's enough. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Can you bring the living water there? Is it the what living says. water, okay? Yes. It comes from the person who told me your name. The person who told me that your name is John is, is, is Jesus. He's the God of the heavens. Yes. Continue to see what is happening. Come, sit here. How are you now? Demonstration! How are you? I'm 
crying. Are you feeling pain? No. Stand up. Sit again. Any pain? No. No pain. If those hands are for Christ, demonstration of power. How are you now? I'm okay. Are you feeling any pain on your toto here? No. Any pain? Stand up. Check it, check it, check it, check it. Check it there. This, is there pain? No pain. Sit, sit again. The pains are gone. Pains are Thank a Jesus. thing of the Thank you, past. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to give you this. Don't worry. It's far much anointed. Your mother will just fill it with water. The water will turn to living water. You use it every time. Thank you, Lord. I'm free. Thank you, my family. Is free. Thank you. The grace of God is sufficient for us. Our names are Mr. and Mrs. Mukobi, and here we are with our son, John. We are from Mahalape, but we currently reside in Tlokwen. Um, before I could go through what uh, John was going through, I'd like to take you back a little bit just to explain why I told the man of God that it has been a struggle. I'll go back to his uh, conception. His conception was not easy, and, is that, and is if, as if that was not enough, during his delivery, it was really a battle. Uh, I delivered him through CS, that is our operation, but it happened that during the, the delivery, well, after the, the gynecologist cut open my womb, he could not deliver the baby. He, he couldn't remove the baby. To a point whereby he left me on the operation table, and by that time, I could uh, hear everything because I was not uh, fully unconscious. They, all, they just made me numb from my waist to the, to the bottom. So he left me on the operation table and then went and called the, 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 the surgeon. He asked for assistance, though he had cut open me. So the surgeon said, no, I can't help because I'm doing another operation. So the gynecologist came back and said, I will just try. And I wondered, trying in this condition, but I just, uh, you know, gave it all to God. Because prior to that, prior to the delivery, I just committed everything to God because of how I struggled during the, 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 the pregnancy. I anointed the, I prayed and covered the, the, the instruments, the, the, the medical doctors, the operation room, whatever that was supposed to be used on me because it was a scheduled operation. Well, I thought that the, 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 the battles were... I, 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 I won the battle. Now came to his one year. We landed back to the hospital, whereby now he had pneumonia. It was so intense that even science, he was not responding to science. To a point whereby I was told, at some point I was told that, uh, Madam, at around 11 p.m., take your child, put him in water, because his temperature was so high that he was not responding to uh, temperature medicines. His lungs had challenges. We had to use natural means now. Though we were in, in hospital at Bokamos, we had to steam him, put tubes through his chest so as to try to, to relieve his, uh, his lungs. This just to show you that his journey has not been easy. So we continued like that, and then along the way, we've, the doctors realized that he had asthma, so every time he would eat, the food would come back, and by then we couldn't really know that he had asthma. Later they said, no, this is asthma. To a point that he had to use sprays, the one for preventing the, the, the lungs from expanding, the other one for opening the lungs so that he could breathe better. So it has been like that since his birth. And then well, still on the journey now came the constipation. He will have to be relieved with medicine. He'll, Whenever we saw that maybe it's three days without relieving himself, we will use the, the medication to try to assist uh, his, um, himself. So it has been like that. This is just to show you the journey of, of how he has been. It happened that on, my, on Monday evening when I came from work, I realized when I, I was changing his pants, I realized that no, his testicle size is it's not what I'm used to. Then I called the father and I said, uh uh, this child testicles, uh, they are swollen. Then he said, no, I saw them on Sunday just a little bit. But I said, mm -mm, the way I see, I don't think it's what you saw. Because now I didn't see him on Sunday because I came to church while he was still asleep and I returned while he was still asleep because I came at night. So when he came, he went straight, 
check the, the, the baby's testicles. Then he said, mm -mm, this is not was how he was on Sunday. So he said, let's take him to the hospital. So we took him around 10 ish, around that, to Sidileg. So when you go there, we went to emergency, they, 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 they consulted, and then after consultation, they asked him to undress. After they saw the condition, uh, they suggested um, ultrasound of, the, of his private parts, of which we had to wait because there was no one, because it was at night. Somebody had to be called from home. The person came, he did the, um, the analysis, and then after the analysis, the report were produced. After the report were produced, the doctor who was in, in that shift felt that the case was beyond her capacity. He said, I'm going to call other doctors who can handle this, but I'm not, release, I'm not releasing you because of this condition. Because from my understanding, this condition, within six hours, he should have been operated because time frame is critical. After six hours, the testicle would have died. So we, the, the issue here is that within six hours, we had to rescue the testicle. Uh, the child was experiencing pain because even when you tried to touch him, yeah, it was really bad, really. It was really bad. Even walking, he, he would have to like be like this so that he, uh, he could walk. Because it was swollen between his, his legs. Then he, say, then he, uh, he explained that what happened is this. The, the, the testicle of the child has turned. And as it has turned, it means like the veins and the arteries now, so there is no blood flow. So if there is no blood flow, no oxygen, no nutrition, hence the, the egg is starting to die. So within these six hours, we had to try to operate and turn it back so that it can, maybe we can rescue it and, and, and get it. So, and then he further on explained that despite what we are going to do, we'll have to also go to the right testicle. Because from the experience as doctors, this one will follow suit. It's just a matter of time. So now what we have to do with the right one, we have to operate so that we can anchor it on the scrotum so that it doesn't follow suit as the left one did. Then we said, ah, now this thing is affecting the whole, um, the entire you know, um, testicles. And then he explained that if this one is dead, if the testicle dies, it means infertility for the child. Hey, it was too much for me to hear that a, a, a young boy like this is, 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 is becoming infertile. And in my mind, when they were telling me about um, the operation, hey, a lot was going on because now we have an, an issue of infertility on the table. And I was like, hey, and something was telling me, oh, hey, but how people are going to look at you? Or you refuse for the child to be operated? They are going to accuse you that you refused. Now the child is infertile. So a lot was going on. But the other part of me was saying, no, don't do this. This is spiritual. So there was conflict within me. The one was saying, no. The other one said, people are going to accuse you. Or you refused. Now the child is infertile. Because we had a challenge of six hours. Then eventually I said, no, I am going. I'm not, I'm not allowing this child to undergo the operation. So I took that decision, though it was not easy, people of God. And then we came to, to the presence of God on Tuesday because we were released on, Monday, on, on Tuesday morning. So after the child was given the living water, we went back home. We went back straight from, from, from church, straight to, uh, to Sidilera because we promised them that, no, release us, we will come. So we, we, we fulfilled our promise. We went back from here to, to, the, um, to the hospital. So when we got there, they did the re-evaluation re of, the, of the test as they promised the, the previous morning, early morning. So we went straight to the, uh, to the ultrasound. They did the scan. But this time it was different. First it was one person. This time around it was a community of the ultrasound people. I think four or five of them. They were doing it at the same time. Doing it, discussing it. But somehow they felt that they were asking themselves, why, why didn't the, the doctor decided to not to do this operation last night? Because this is a, a, a critical issue. Because to them, it was something that should have been attended to in the first scan. So to me, it was too much to a point that even during the analysis, I had to excuse myself and go outside and, and then ask the father to, to continue. So after that, he released us. And then we told him, well, no, we'll come back with the testimony. So on Friday, we were privileged to meet the man of God. I pleaded with the man of God on the behalf of the child, telling him that the child has a, 
uh, left testicular torsion, and the man of God um, prayed for the child, and then during the, 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 the prayer, he asked us, what is the child's name? I told him, oh, no, it's just the continuation of, of, of sentence, because the first one is Sineo, second one Sarona, now this one is Sicile. Then he said, no, from heaven he is John, and that's how his name was changed. And then in addition to that, the man of God also, uh, while he, were, he was praying for him, he um, gave him the living water to drink. So the child uh, drank the living water, and then after he drank the living water, the man of God asked him, how are you? The child said, no pain. And ever since that time of no pain, we went back home after the prayer. And then ever since, the child has not complained about the pain. Because the last time I gave him the painkillers that we were given at the hospital while awaiting operation, the last time I gave him the, those painkillers was when we were still waiting for the man of God by the where we were arranged for the prayer. That was the last time he took those painkillers. Even up to now, he, has never, he, has, he hasn't taken any painkillers. The grace of God is sufficient for all of us. Yes, a uh, man of God uh, told me that uh, this problem was uh, the people from my village, the practices that we used to do. I can attest to it. Uh, that is 100% true. I come from uh, a family, from my mother's side, where they believed so much in uh, traditional doctors. They would uh, visit traditional doctors. And at times, you know, we've had uh, some people coming to uh, the place where incisions were, were made. I know I've had uh, some uh, incisions and uh, a black substance rubbed uh, in, on my skin. And uh, every December, Christmas, you know, there was uh, a cow that had to be killed and all of us gathered and uh, we enjoyed. To me, it was just a celebration. We enjoyed the celebration and uh, everyone was there, not really knowing uh, the meaning behind it. But what I remember very well is uh, a time when people started uh, dying or passing on. Every year we would lose someone, someone would get sick, we would lose that person. Every year, I think for a continuous six years, uh, my uncles and my aunts, and uh, you know, my grandfather got hit by a bus. He also uh, passed on. And because of this, there was a time when they decided, ah, this is too much. And uh, there was a bath that was, there was a celebration. A bath was put behind uh, uh, a house and everyone had to go pass through it. The idea was that Runtua uh, Sihi, and we had to go and pass and uh, bath through that but that did not help in, in any way. Uh, from everyone passing in a year's time, it now reduced to uh, six months. After six months, uh, people started uh, passing on. It uh, became so severe because when the first, uh, when my aunt passed on, the first passed on, they went to the graveyard and they fenced an area. Uh, I remember when uh, the six, I think that was the last, after passing on, they went and removed the fence. They said, ah, so it was uh, removed. Others uh, saying, the, the reason that we have fenced, that is saying we need to make it full. So it was uh, removed. And uh, after it was uh, removed, well, I was still a child. I was still a child, but I still remember very well these events that uh, took place. When I was at primary, I decided to follow Jesus. So I went to, uh, at the time, uh, I believed it was a living church. And, uh, you know, I told my parents, I told everyone that I have decided to take this path. They were not happy about it. Uh, my parents were not happy. My uncles were not happy. Uh, they told me that, you know what, how about now, Rian? And uh, and there was so much resistance. Being a kid, uh, I backslid. I think I was doing Form 2 at the time. I backslid. 
Right from the church, I went to the bar. I started drinking alcohol, you know, so much that I didn't start with like how others start, where people start with, uh, you know, taking sweet alcohol. You know, I, I went right to the strongest. And I was taking alcohol with uh, my uncles, you know, and, uh, well, at the time we thought it was uh, enjoyment. But uh, I then realized that, you know what, I think it was a se severe attack because you cannot move from church right to, uh, to the bar. Uh, I was one person who have also written articles in uh, school magazines about Christ. But, you know, after backsliding, I went to the bar. I started uh, with uh, women, a lot of women. It didn't matter. Uh, you know, we would say any kind of women, married, old, uh, cousins, you can name it all. That is the life that I continued to live after that. I remember one time the man of God gave me a prophecy. He said, do you know where it all began? Uh, then he said, it started with women. You know, at the time I was uh, not comfortable. So when the man of God uh, wanted to talk, I said, yes, yes, quickly. I wanted him to finish quickly because I didn't want him to reveal. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, I acknowledged that whatever he said was true. Your child, when we saw on the screen, the mother was pleading that my child cannot sit down because of the pain. He cannot do anything. We want to know, ever since prayer, is your child able to sit freely without any pain? He's free. Very much free. When we left here, he said, ah, Daddy, I can now walk without my legs being spread. Now let us take this moment to hear from the boy, John. How are you, John? Fine. How are you? I'm fine. Can you stand up? Let us see you standing up. Can you stand up? How are you as you're standing up? Are you okay? Yeah. Sit down once again. Let us see. This is something that was not possible. He could not sit comfortably. Uh, people of God, um, as you can see on the screen here, from this uh, ultrasound scan, this is the left uh, testicle, the one that was uh, that the one that had torsion. So you can see that it is swollen. So when you compare it with the right testicle, you can see that there is difference in terms of size. So this one is the normal one, the right one. This is the one that was affected by torsion, the left one. And then when you come to the uh, radiology um, um, report, you can see here that they say that the child has left testicular torsion as a way of um, attesting that indeed the child had uh, this problem. Now here, the issue that I was talking about of uh, constipation that he had, recently it, be, it became uh, very severe. And then he, the child, as we can see here, the doctor is saying that this black thing, like this thickness here, it is the enlarged uh, intestines due to the full um, waste due to uh, constipation. This one was the one that uh, the, the doctors gave him while they were awaiting operation so that he can relieve the pain while he's still awaiting the operation. This one was the one now when they realized that now the, 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 the constipation is chronic. As you can see, that is for uh, chronic constipation in children. So this one for the constipation. They also gave him the probiotics as a way of, of stimulating uh, the bowel movement. These are the probiotics still for constipation. This one was the one that whenever we realize that maybe he reaches two or three days without relieving himself, we will administer uh, the, 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 the medication. What is your word of encouragement to those who are here? Uh, my word of encouragement uh, goes to parents. One day, the man of God, after delivering one young lady, he said, where are your, your, your kids? Then that word really hit my heart, and then I said that from now on, I'll come with this one, because whenever I come with him, I have to stay at the mother's section. Then I said, I will try by all means that I'll come with this one, into the, into, I'll come with him into the, into the house of the Lord. So to the parents, I'll say that, the children are a blessing of the Lord. Let's carry them along into the house of the Lord so that they also experience the goodness of God in their lives. Thank you, Jesus. We are free.